Okay guys, we're on our way home from our little Simpson trip. Uh, the four of us have uh, left Farina on the 11th, drove all the way up through Kidman's uh, property, across into Mount Dare, across into the Rig Road, down around the bottom end of the Simpson all the way, back up through Bobble Corner, across the Birdsville, and then the next day we turned around and came back across Birdsville, the, the Simpson Desert from Birdsville. We went across the uh, French line the second time on the way back. And uh, I can tell you now from a lot of years of outback driving and outback roads, the rabbit damage on that road is horrific. And it's continuously up and down bumpity bump stuff that you do at about four or five kilometers an hour. And it is pretty tough. The rig road was very good. But uh, we finally got back across and we're, this is the 29th of July, uh, June, I'm sorry, 29th of June. And uh, we, paked, we camped at Lake Boggle in Victoria, central Victoria, about a three hour drive to my place at home. And uh, we're all going home tomorrow. And uh, I dare say every one of us has to recuperate and uh, wash all our clothes. Um, it's fortunately when you're out here, clothes washing becomes a problem. And uh, I'll show you the car in a minute, and it doesn't need a wash, it's perfectly all right. Okay, how'd you go, Rod? Did you have some fun this trip? Good trip, man. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed it, it was great. <laughs> Such an adventure. Now see, guys, once you missed out on another real trip out in the outback. A real remote trip, an isolated trip. When you see the videos on TV, on the YouTube channel, um, I still didn't get bogged. Remember my rules. I didn't get bogged. I never asked for outside assistance. But I did do some training exercises with Roger on showing him how to pull my vehicle out of a, out of a stuck position. But I wasn't bogged, of course. Okay, guys. Catch you later. And uh, believe me, in the daylight it looks a lot worse. Took. And uh, it's not too bad, but we have been through a bit of water, a bit of rain since on the way home. But uh, if you're wondering what the camp setup is, um, I'll show you how we camp most of the time. Uh, it's fairly basic and uh, fairly self-contained. And uh, I know it's getting a bit dark here, but the two swags are underneath the, the uh, awning on the side of the vehicle. That's where the guys sleep every night, just out of the frost. And they live in the back of the vehicle. The fridge and so forth and all that is in the back there. And uh, it's very basic, very, very basic. But uh, easy to set up in a hurry, easy to pull down in a hurry, and a great trip. The, uh, the fridge and the gas stove swings out in the suicide door in the truck there. And uh, we virtually live off the gas stove in there or we'll cook on the open fire. And uh, that's all you need to go. You don't need all this whiz -bang technology and all this whiz -bang, uh, rubbish to take with you. Um, the basic stuff is the best. The more basic it is, the less problems you'll have. The more complicated it is, the more tricks and toys you have, the more things you'll have break. So think about it before you take off. Think about what you're going to take and what you're going to use. I've even got stuff in the car now that I brought with us on this trip that we didn't use. So I'm still, still working out what I need to take and not need to take over all these years. That's it for me guys, hope you had a bit of fun and uh, I hope you can get out and do the right thing and I uh, hope to meet you out there someday. Jack's waiting for you, get out there and do the right